Okay, folks. Well, as you can see, we've got the floors torn out, so we have easy access to show you what's going on with foundation. Uh, one, of the, one of the first things you want to notice is if water is getting underneath the house or not. Having water get underneath is one of the worst things you can have with foundation problems. And as you can see, the cracks underneath the house down here, that at one time there was water getting under here and it's dried out since then. The, uh, what that causes, as you can see, when people come in and they put this, they redo a foundation, your beams are just sitting here not doing anything. They're just floating. So needless to say, you get a lot of work done, and you get water back underneath the house, you're going to start losing your foundation footings. Some of these old homes are uh, on what they call bodark blocks. Some of them are on cedar blocks. And this down here, this is an old bodark limb. It was probably around, I would think this one was probably about a, a foot in diameter. Well, in, some, in the older homes, like the one we're in now, that was the way they were built. They had a, they would pour concrete, then they would take that bodark block and just set it inside, that, uh, set it in the concrete itself. And as it's hardening, they would lay the ledger beam, stick a nail in there, just to kind of keep everything stable until the concrete dried. Well, since then, when the house starts moving around, foundation companies come in and they use what's known as pad and pier. And that's where you have these would be considered your piers and that you can get them in all different sizes. Now what's recommended is 8x8s. Eight eight. And I'll show you the ones that you're supposed to use. These are the ones you're not supposed to because this is what they call a low density concrete. It's got a lot of air space in there. You want the high strength concrete pad and piers. And it's the same thing. It's the same thing with the pads you get, but you want your pier, uh, your pads to be high strength concrete. And what they do is they'll have these 16 by 16 pads and they'll have rebar in there. So that if for any reason they do crack, that rebar is going to hold them together. Because if you get a pad and it breaks, then your pier that's sitting in the middle, as you can see what happens, it breaks and then your, your piers fall. And then you're back to the same spot that you were in before you even had the foundation work done. And then the next thing as far as you never use 4x4 four four girders underneath the house. The, the uh, the minimum you want to use is a six, a four by six, six inch standing on the end, four inches wide. I, I like to do three of them, three two by sixes nailed together against each other because you have good holding power. And plus your eight inch block, your eight inch pier, your uh, two by six is sitting there, it's just just enough for that 8x8 eight eight up here to help to support that weight with a little extra on each side. And another take here.